In this video, I'm going to discuss some steps you can take to protect yourself during a recession. So there's the expression that if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. So guys, I think it's important for us to do whatever we can to prepare for an economic downturn if it happens. I mean, for following the news regarding unemployment, the stimulus package negotiations, the stock market, I can tell you that there's a lot of uncertainty and anxiety in the markets right now. Now, nobody can predict the future, but we can take precautions to make sure we are in the best possible financial shape if the worst happens. But before we get into the details, welcome back Joel at Alls. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We discuss finance, real estate, and other life-related topics. Consider subscribing and turning on the notification bell as I'm posting valuable new content at least twice a week. All right guys, so we're gonna discuss some actionable ways you can prepare for a recession so that you are protected and best prepared to deal with the declining economy. Now, if you're watching this video, first off, thank you, I appreciate it. But more importantly, with the way the world is going right now, it's no surprise that you might be wondering how to prepare for a recession. Now luckily guys, there are some solid common sense basic things you can do to prepare your finances for a recession. Although everyone's case is different, for example, it's easier to prepare for a recession depending on when it hits your life. Just remember, Joe at Alls, that no matter who you are, the basics remain the same. So you're going to want to make sure you implement steps that are going to be overall great for your finances no matter what happens and you also want to avoid the panicky fear-based moves that can make your situation worse off. Alright guys, so my first piece of advice in preparing for recession is to build your emergency fund. It is recommended at minimal to have three to six months of living expenses saved up in case of an emergency. Now this amount will vary based on your expenses, but you should be able to cover your current financial obligations. Now does pulling money you digitally saved out of your savings account suck? Sure it does, not gonna lie. But I know for myself, I feel much better knowing that I'm covered for a portion of time. Now, some people favor having access to a line of credit or a credit card for an emergency, and this can be an option. However, the only issue with this method is that banks can, and at will, lower your line of credit or your available credit. And if this were to happen during a crisis, well, you would be in some very hot water. Also, by doing it this way, you would most likely rack up more debt during a time when you have no income or reduced income. Now, the next actionable step is to track your spending. If you don't track your spending, I will bet you money that you cannot tell me how much you spent on groceries or coffee or lunches on average last year. Now, sure, you probably have an idea. You may say, well, Joseph, my budget for food is $300 a month. And I would say, well, that's great. However, speaking as someone who still goes over their grocery budget from time to time, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I know for a fact that simply having a budget does not mean you spend exactly $300 a month on food. With that being said, Joel Dawes, the best time to figure out what you spend is now before trying to cut back. By doing it this way, you'll have a baseline number to work from, and on top of that, you'll probably be able to identify patterns to help cut back if that's what's needed. Now, my next piece of advice is to understand where you can cut back. All right, so I'm gonna let you know that all of your budget line items roughly fall into one of two categories. First category are wants, and the second category are needs. So you need to spend money on food, but you want to spend money on restaurants. Ugh, remember restaurants? I do and I miss them. Now guys, I'm guilty of this myself. I love a good happy hour and there have been times where I've splurged on going out, but when you're preparing for a possible recession, it's important to remember to have a good understanding of which light items are which. Knowing where you can cut down on once in your monthly budget is the best way to understand your baseline level of spending each month. Knowing where you can cut back and how much you're spending is incredibly powerful, guys since it will help you to calculate how much money to save for an emergency, not to mention how long your savings will cover you in a recession if the worst happens. All right, Joe Dahl, so let me ask you guys a question. What was the most impressive thing you did at work last year? Do you remember? Do you remember the results of the extra project assignment you took on? Now, I know for myself that it's hard to dig up the details when you've been away from them for a while. So make sure to keep track of your accomplishments at work and make sure they make their way to your resume sooner rather than later. So the next actionable step is to make sure you keep your resume and work-related accomplishments up to date. If the time does come when you need to start sending that resume out, it'll be up to date and full of your most impressive moments. Now you may have had the expression, never rely on one source of income. Diversifying your income beyond a full-time job gives you so much security. That's honestly hard to quantify. When you have other streams of income, losing your main income source 
might sting a bit, but it involves less panic. For myself, guys, this is the one reason I started investing in real estate back in 2018. I think real estate is a great way to build residual passive income, increase your net worth, and have an asset that is not going anywhere. If you think about it, guys, no matter what happens, people will always need somewhere to stay. So, Joe Dolls, I would encourage you to start a side hustle or maybe just look into other ways to generate passive income other than your nine to five. So the next thing is, guys, is to pay down your debts. Now, there are different types of debt, and this is a highly controversial topic, but for purposes of this video, I'm referring to consumer personal debt or any type of debt that is not putting money in your pocket, giving you a return on your investment. Truth is, guys, that being debt-free is one of the best ways to give yourself flexibility, recession or no recession. The money you spend towards paying down your debt every month gets freed up as soon as you're debt free. And even if becoming fully debt free is a ways out on the horizon, lowering your debt means you'll pay less in interest over time if you need to drop down to paying minimum payment. In addition to paying down your existing debts, you wanna make sure you're not taking on any new debt. So my recommendation is that if you're worried that the economy might do a nosedive sometime soon or you're in an unstable job situation, it's best not to take on any new debt or optional purchases. Now, examples of optional purchases means include postponing, maybe buying a new car, or not taking on a kitchen renovation unless you're able to pay for it in cash. The fewer debts you have to manage, the fewer payments you have in your budget in the worst case scenario. So my next piece of advice is to take advantage of credit offers responsibly. All right, guys, give it to me. Are you gonna drag me? <laughs> you're probably thinking, well, Joseph, you're contradicting yourself. Well, let me clarify my last statement before you hit that dislike button. And by the way, if you haven't hit the like button yet, please do so. It helps a ton in helping to grow and support the channel. Anyway, guys, if you're confused or scratching your head about my last statement, did not take on any debt, I understand, but getting more credit does not always taking on more debt. I honestly think that credit is a very powerful thing when used appropriately. And I'll be honest, Joe Dawes, this is something that I struggled with early in my life because I thought that by increasing my credit limit was forever and always a bad move. So more credit means more debt, right? Wrong. <laughs> I'm always actively increasing my credit limits because I see it as a form of emergency protection and it also helps to raise my credit score by lowering my utilization ratios. Now, just like water or fire, I view credit as a tool. It can be used to grow or it can also be used for destructive purposes. Think about it like this, guys. During a recession, it's much harder to get approved for a new credit like a, a new line of credit or an increase in your credit card limit. Meanwhile, this is the time when having available credit might come in handy, especially if you didn't go into the economic downturn with a fully stocked emergency fund. You know, my grandfather always told me, and may he rest in peace, that it's better to have and not need than to need and not have. And this life lesson has stuck with me all the way to this day. So Joe it all, by taking an increase to your credit card limit or getting a line of credit now, you'll likely have it available in the worst case. The trick is just to make sure you only use it in the worst case. All right guys, so it drives me absolutely up the wall, it drives me insane seeing people advocate that everyone should pull their money out of the stock market or avoid investing because there is a recession coming. So my next recommendation is do not stop investing, especially if you're younger in age and retirement is a while off. Now, yes, the stock market goes up and down. It goes through cycles. However, historically, by consistently investing your money over time, it has proven to be an effective strategy to grow your money. So in terms of investing, Joe Dawes, consider the following. No one knows for sure what the future will bring. No one. Waiting for the next recession to invest is a very squishy goal. What counts as a recession? Will you invest when the market goes down 5%, 10%? Think about that. So if you're not investing already, trust me when I say that when the market is going down in a recession, you're not gonna feel better about putting your money into investments more so than you do right now. If you are investing and you pull your money out of the market, you'll miss out on potential gains between now and the upcoming recession. And then you're gonna need to try to time the market to get back in. So Joe Dawes, look at investing as an important piece of your long-term money wealth building plan. I would recommend making your investing decisions based on things like your goals, your timeline, and your risk tolerance, and not predictions about what you think might happen next week or next month. And finally, guys, preparing for a recession can be a good financial move. Preparing your overall personal finances for a recession 
is just a great idea. Even if a recession is years out, you have a stocked emergency fund, a solid budget, available credit, lower debt ratios, and more than one income stream, and also an up-to-date resume to see you through the worst of it. And while these are all excellent moves for your finances when times are good, when the recession does come around, because it will eventually come around, you'll be really happy that you did all this preparation ahead of time. So Joel at Oz, what are your thoughts about preparing for recession? What strategies and tips have you implemented in your own life? Leave your feedback in the comment section. If you found value in the video, please be sure to hit the like button. It helps me out a ton with the YouTube algorithm and goes a long way to supporting and grow the channel. Be sure to share this video on all your social media platforms and subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell as I'm posting value new content at least twice a week. Thanks for watching and until next time.